What's up, my friends? We're going to evaluate the integral of x to the power of 100 times e to the negative x. And it's going to be awesome because we're not going to use integration by parts 100 times, although you can if you really want to, if you like pain or something. But we're going to use the Feynman trick or Feynman technique. And you can use this technique to solve other integrals as well. So we're going to start off with a function that we know how to integrate, e to the negative tx. And by doing so, we've also introduced a parameter, a new variable t, that's going to help us. Now, this function is easy to integrate. And if we take the derivative of this function with respect to t, the partial derivative, we get negative x e to the negative tx. If we take the partial derivative again, we get x squared times e to the negative tx. And if we continue taking the derivative over and over, if we take it n times, we'll get x to the n e to the negative tx. Now this is true for even n's because if we have even n's, like take the derivative two times, four times, there's no negative sign here. If this was an odd number, then we'd have a negative sign just like when we took the derivative once. We have an even number here, 100, so we're gonna use this one right here for even n. Now this is the trick. We're going to integrate the easy function, which will give us a function of t, and then we'll take the derivative a number of times, a hundred times, so we won't actually do it a hundred times, uh, to get to the integral that we want and we'll be done. So let me show you how this works step by step. So first we'll integrate the easy function, integral of e to the negative tx, which is like literally our friend to integrate. So this is negative e to the negative x over t, evaluated from zero to infinity. And if we evaluate this in the limits, we get one over t. Now, this is the trick part. We're going to take the derivative a bunch of times. So we'll take the derivative to get our desired function. So what this looks like is this here. So the derivative f prime is the derivative with respect to t. And this is a, a normal, like single variable derivative. I shouldn't say normal, but single variable derivative because after we take the integral, the x is gone, so it's just a function of t only. Of, so we're taking the derivative of our integral, and that's the same as taking the derivative with respect to t of 1 over t, because 1 over t is what our integral evaluates into. Well, there's this pretty sweet trick that allows us to bring the derivative right inside the integral sign, no problem. <laughs> we, we can't do it willy-nilly. It actually can be dangerous to do that. There are conditions that have to be met. This is the Leibniz integral rule that allows us to do that. I have a detailed derivation of this rule. If you want to see the conditions, we need to and confirm there's a dominant function and things like that. Uh, but we'll assume we can kind of just bring it in. And when we bring it in, it becomes a partial derivative because our function inside is a function of x and t. Okay, well, the derivative of this with respect to t, we've kind of already done here, this f prime prime. That's our negative x e to the negative tx. And the derivative of 1 over t, again, that's like our friend. That's negative 1 over t squared. Now, if we continue to take the derivative, and 100 times, that's like n times, right? If we just use this, this formula here, this patterning of, of taking the derivative that number of times, we get the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 100, because that's like our n, x to the n, times e to the negative tx. And this, my friends, this is very close to the integral that we want to integrate. Well, what does this become? We kind of get that pattern. So like every time you take the derivative, this is kind of like a, a power rule where this exponent gets rolled in front here. So it would be two, and then this would be a three. Then we take the derivative again. The three comes multiplies by the two. So it's three times two times one. Then if we take the derivative again, it gets to four, then there'll be three times. You see, so this becomes a factorial. So, 100, so if we take the derivative 100 times, then the numerator becomes 100 times 99 times 90, 98 times 97 times 96. So it's 100 factorial divided by t to the power of 101. Now, we don't care about t, really. Our integral doesn't have t in it. But if we set t equal to 1, then that literally gives us the integral we want. So that, my friends, that's our answer. So that's pretty sweet. And our calculator can't even give us that answer. Uh, if that made sense to you, try this integral where we don't even have a number. We're actually integrating with an unknown variable constant in it. You can use the same methods 
follow it step by step. It should work out. Good luck on your midterms, final exams. Hang in there. The more integrals you do, the better you'll get. You can survive.